So in 2016, Amazon launched a 3D printing service. This is actually a really interesting story. What happened is that Amazon actually acquired a 3D printing company that was doing sand 3D printing bobbleheads. And the reason they were using sand 3D printing is because at the time that was the most reliable means of getting color out of a 3D printer. It was originally launched as the Amazon 3D printing store. And the idea was that you could actually go into the Amazon 3D printing marketplace store, select a bobblehead, and then you'd be able to change the color of the hair and the eyes and give it glasses or something like that and create an avatar of yourself that would then be 3D printed and shipped to you. All of this for under 40 bucks. And three months later, it shut down. The reason it shut down is twofold, scale and customer interest. Amazon should understand that people are looking for selection, they're not looking for customization. Amazon is about giving you what it is you're looking for, but not giving you a palette and saying, draw what you want us to make for you. That is a terrible customer experience. But at the same time, 3D printing at the time didn't really have the scale to deliver if people had actually wanted it. So there was kind of a double whammy of why this wasn't cool. It was done as part of the hype cycle of the 2016 3D printing craze, but it wasn't really a good option. But Amazon, we recently released an API that lets anybody plug into our print farms in order to produce items on demand and ship directly to a customer. Here's a pitch for why you should probably call us, connect to our API, and let us plug one of our print farms into the side of one of your fulfillment centers. The number one reason is 3D printing is a means of distribution, and no one knows distribution better than Amazon. It was a competitive advantage against Barnes & Noble in the beginning and continues to be the primary moat that Amazon has against everybody else doing online retail. You guys have fleets of planes, you have fleets of vans, you had tons of warehouses. Distribution is what is valuable and differentiable in the context of delivering products to customers. 3D printing is one step further because 3D printing is even better than the best form of distribution you have right now because rather than moving an item from some country to one of your warehouses and then to someone's store, you simply have the item appear in the warehouse nearest to one of your customer's houses. This not only eliminates all of that transport cost and all the distribution expense and allows you to teleport items to where they are needed, but it also has an ancillary benefit that you are also very familiar about. When Amazon was getting started, your warehouses were lower rent per square foot than retail storage was. Even Walmart, who wasn't in premium space, had to pay more per square foot for warehousing and storage. You guys were in a warehouse on the back 40, so you were able to store large quantities of items really reliably, but still deliver them in a reasonable sort of way. 3D printing pushes this even further, because even though you get the cheapest rent with large scale warehousing, 3D printing has zero rent, because no item is stored on the shelves. It appears on the shelves. This lets you create a warehouse with infinite selection, but zero inventory that has any sort of fixed or recurring cost associated with it. You don't have to store an item on your shelves for years. You can just have a row of printers in the back that produce any sorts of items at any given moment at the rate that you need them to. And there's one other advantage that printing gives you. Amazon has recently, over the last few years, started getting into a lot of generic brands like Amazon Basics. And these brands are things that you have to create somewhere and then deliver over here. And that's fine if you have good data and know that a product will be successful. And Amazon has a culture of testing and iteration, but you're not able to test and iterate on physical stuff very quickly to really improve the product. If you guys create something like, I don't know, a desktop organizer, where you wanna put some pins in the back and some post-it notes in there and whatever else it happens to be. Creating this takes a couple of months, you get it delivered, you have to store up a few thousand of them to make sure that they're delivered on time when people actually order them and you release this product. But as soon as there is a bug, you can't really fix it. You can just cancel or recall the product. But with printing, you can update the model and then every product shipping out after that is able to be improved and you're able to ship replacements within a day as soon as people report the error. So let's go ahead and do this case study with actual 3D printed desktop organizers, because Amazon Basics doesn't really have that right now. First of all, what we would do is you definitely design it for FDM because that's what our print farms do. And of course you're gonna wanna work with us because we have the API, we have the scale, and we have the know-how of how to implement something like this into your warehouses so that a normal person can actually walk by, pluck one of these parts off of one of our printers and throw it into a box. Or have some one of your Kiva bots go over and grab one of them, whatever you happen to be doing. But what you would do is you would design 
a desktop organizer with Amazon Basics wonderfully printed across the front in this example. The organizer, you would first create a couple of variations where you have pen holders in the back, a sticky note slot right there, some place for your paper clips. And then once you're done with that one, you would keep on iterating on it, creating new variation after new variation so that you are not giving people the option to create the custom desk organizer, you're giving them a selection of several thousand of which you only had the design cost, which is actually relatively low. You do not have to cut a mold for each one of these things or anything else. You upload all those 3D models to something like our API. We have a couple thousand printers put into the side of each one of your fulfillment centers. When someone orders one of these, a printer fires up and produces it in about somewhere between eight to 15 hours. Once that part is available, it pings the system to say, go fulfill. An associate can come by, pluck one of these off the machine, throw it into a box and ship it to a customer. And since it's local and produced in the fulfillment center nearest to where that customer order came from, you're able to still deliver in under two days. You just added thousands of new items to inventory. They are custom branded. They can be improved over time. They're not transported close to the customer. They are created close to the customer. And then over time, you're able to expand this. New data comes back. You realize people like the sticky note option more. So you expand thousand more sticky note variations of these organizers. And then you go from there. All the while being able to take advantage of lower distribution costs, lower warehousing and storage costs, and having a long-term product differentiation because you're actually able to test and iterate on physical hardware as fast as if you were pushing software updates. So this actually is an evolution of your model, which is finding cheaper ways of storing stuff and using new means of distribution that are enabled by technology. In 1995, it was the internet. Today, it could be 3D printing. So give us a call, slant3d.com. Have a great day, everybody.